A rich chocolate caramel sauce, hearty oats, peanut butter, and aromatic vanilla makes up this delicious cookie. Doesn't it already sound wonderful? And the beauty of it is, it's really simple to make. These are my mom's magnificent no-bake cookies, and I gotta share them with you. Here are the ingredients, but don't worry. As always, I'm going to include a link below that will give a detailed instructions and nutrition information. So let's start. In a saucepan, I have one and a half cups of sugar. That's 300 grams. And to this, I'm adding one stick or one half cup of butter, or 113 grams. I'm also going to put in one half cup of milk, or 120 milliliters, and one quarter cup of cocoa, or 20 grams. Now, if you noticed, I used the stick of butter and I made a line around the pan. This helps keep the sugar from crystallizing and will help it actually from boiling over. It's a trick my mom taught me. I don't know why people don't talk about that anymore. It's actually in her cookbook from the 1970s, so I'm sure she learned it from there. Now what you want to do is start out on a lower heat until your butter melts. I like to get everything well combined so you don't have any lumpy cocoa. Um, another option is you can put the cocoa and the sugar together and stir it really well and it will help break up the lumps before you put it into the pan. Now as you can see it's very nicely smoothed. I've zoomed in so you can see it better and we're about to start boiling. What makes this a very easy recipe is all you're doing is making a nice softball stage caramel and a lot of the recipes out there will tell you bring it to a full boil and then cook it one minute and don't stir. I actually recommend stirring it because I've tried to do this without the stirring and two things happen. One, the one minute is never a sufficient time because my stove apparently is different from the recipe stove and so is a lot of other people's because they were telling the same story. Mine never set. And two, by stirring it, you ensure that that nice, rich chocolate caramel sauce never burns. There's nothing worse than having burnt milk ruin a dessert. And you don't know it until after it cools and you take that first bite and get a bitter, sour taste. So please, just ignore the one-minute fail-safe recipes that seem to fail so many people because they don't realize all you're doing is cooking at softball stage. If you don't know what softball stage is, it is 235 degrees or about 113 degrees Celsius and when you drop this liquid into some cold water you will see that it will form a soft ball. I will show you that later on. As you see this is now boiling. It's got a nice rolling boil and according to the other recipes it should be one minute from now. However my total cook time took about four and a half minutes so I just want to put that out there so you guys aren't surprised if it takes a little longer. And the reason this happens and why the one minute rule does not work for everyone is you don't know what kind of pan they're using, you don't know what kind of heat source they're using. For instance, I'm using a tri-ply and I have an induction heat source. For me, medium is very hot. Medium is basically high on this stove. So if I would cook anything on a medium, it would be a high for someone with an electric stove, for instance. And a gas stove is even more variable. A lot of people prefer gas. I've worked on all three. I used to be a huge gas proponent. I am now a person that will tell you induction is amazing for the safety benefits, for the amount of control you have over your food to the fact that you can literally lay your hand on the stovetop and not get burned. It's just an amazing cook, cook surface to work with. Now I'm using a, about a number three on the stove. If you're using gas or electric, you want to use medium, medium low, medium high. You want a nice rolling boil, gentle though. So if it's going too fast, if it's rising really high, you want to back it down. I recommend you put it on medium and just see what happens. Don't let it boil over. Just let it be a nice, consistent, even boil like this. As you can see, it's starting to thicken up really nice. And it's still a nice, rolling, gentle boil. 
I'm not getting hurt because I'm using a low even heat and it's going to take a little bit of time but it's so worth it because the sugars will dissolve this will be a silky smooth rich caramel sauce that is just loaded with cocoa it takes a maybe 10 minutes from getting all your ingredients together to boiling it to putting the oats and peanut butter and vanilla and salt in the rest. It's just an amazingly quick cookie. It's sometimes referred to as surprise cookies or preacher cookies for the preacher that would show up down south and like, you know, never told anybody he was coming. So the little woman would go into the kitchen and whip up a batch of these and they'd be ready on the table by the time dinner was served. So I really think that you will enjoy this recipe once you learn it. Again, the trick is just making this to the softball stage and I'm going to show you what it looks like. As you can see, it's making nice little ball shapes into the glass and I'm going to show it to you in my hand. You want to let it cool a little bit before you remove it or you will get burned. As you can see, it's a nice ball shape. So we're done. Turn it off the heat immediately, remove it, and it's going to still boil. You need to be very careful when you move it because you can get burned. Toss in those oats. Get them all if you can. That was three cups worth or 240 grams. Next you're going to put in your peanut butter which is half a cup or 132 grams. And I like to use the creamy version because it's the classic way to make these but you can also use crunchy peanut butter. It works perfectly fine. The natural doesn't work as well because of the oil separation. Finally, you want to add in 5 milliliters or 1 teaspoon of vanilla. And if you're not going to put salt on top like I'm going to, you'll want to add in the salt at this point. You'll want to add in 1 teaspoon of salt or 5 grams. I don't add the salt in when you're boiling because when you put salt in with hot boiling liquids, sometimes it can actually put impurities in it and make it spatter. It's just a quick tip. And then all you're going to do is just stir this. Now if you cook this too hot, it'll start turning crumbly. I will show that on the blog post. It's not a big deal. It just won't form cookies. It's still edible. It's still delicious. Just next time, cook it a little lower. And as you can see, Maggie is my sous chef here. She <laughs> loves to watch me bake. She's always begging for food. Unfortunately, this has chocolate and it's cocoa. Cocoa is so dangerous for dogs, so sorry Maggie, you're not getting any of these today. And I want to point out something I did that I think was a mistake. When I was researching how to make these again, I read use a scooper, it's easier. Personally, I thought this was a horrible idea. It kept this in the shape of a mound, and I realized that was happening, and I had to push them down with a fork. Well, when I pushed them down with a fork to make them into a nice cookie shape, they lost their sheen, so they still tasted wonderful, but they just didn't look as pretty as they should. So I highly recommend skipping the nice little scooper, and you'll see in just a few moments what my mom used to do. It's honestly the most superior way of making these cookies. Poor Maggie, she's just so heartbroken that I won't give them to her. She's going to try a different position. She's so cute. She just cracks me up. She gets closer and then she gives you those cute little puppy ears. And while they're still warm, I like to put cracked pink Himalayan pink salt. Sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Or sea salt. Now, as you can see, I had to push them down and they're not as pretty, but they're still going to taste good. So I'm going to go to my mom's method. I'm using the wooden spoon that they came out of. I'm getting a big dollop and I'm just pushing them off there with a fork and then just shaping them together. And as you can see, as it starts to cool, it starts to form really easily. So you want to work a little bit quickly, but not too quickly because you don't want to get burned. I mean, worst case scenario, you get some of the pieces that are going to be flaked off. And as all the people say, it's a cook's treat, so don't worry about it. Now, when you're making any kind of caramel sauce, it is highly recommended you use a wooden spoon or something that is heat safe up to very high temperatures. Don't use a metal spoon because it can actually crawl up and make you burned. I've learned the hard way. And never, ever, ever use those plastic cheap spoons. It'll just eat that plastic right away and 
it's not good for you, it's not good for the environment, and it ruins your food. So use a wooden spoon or a heat safe silicone spatula when making caramels. I still like to use wooden spoons because I just think they are awesome. Now this is all you have to do. And don't worry about scraping out all of what's left in the container if you don't want to. You can easily clean this. I was just checking them right there to see if they were done. And they weren't. And another thing I want to point out is one I'm having on a baking sheet and the other one I'm having on just a wire rack and some wax paper. I like putting it on the wire rack because it cools a lot faster. It's just a quick tip. And if you crack them open, they're beautiful, they're delicious. And I want to thank Maggie, my sous chef, for helping me in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. This is my mom's magnificent no-bake cookies. Visit us at jacksonsjob.com for more recipes. And like and subscribe for more future videos to come. Thank you.